Hey, welcome to Tools on Tech, and I want to talk about Logseq project management. Now I'm going to talk about what I consider a project first, and then I'm going to talk about the free methods that I use on a regular basis, which is the gatherer method, the outsource method, and the planner method. All three are going to come there. If you want to skip ahead, though, you can use the table of contents in the bottom. So let's start with what is a project. And to me, a project is a place where I collect all the information to reach a set goal. Now, if there isn't a goal, if you can't wrap it up, I don't consider it a project. It's more of a responsibility. And in this case, we're really talking about projects, things that you do for a while and then wrap up. And then the main goal in something like Logseek is to be a collection place. You need to know who to contact, where the documentation is, anything about meetings that were, notes that were made, and of course, the actual tasks to get to the end point. Logseek is really good at all these things, except maybe they're working together with people, but we'll get to that one in the last one, the outsourcer. And then the first method that I want to talk about is the gather method. This is the simplest and something you do in Logseq nearly all the time. And that means that you make a project, so you get a dedicated page for it, give it the type project and just start linking towards it. So anytime you have a meeting or a task or a note or a link about that project, you link towards that page. And then on the bottom of that page, you will start seeing all the references pop up and those will show you what you need to do or what is left. Of course, you can help yourself a bit here with with simple queries as they'll pop up whatever you need. I'm gonna give you a couple of examples. So I got my demo Logseq open and say I wanna do a new project. I'm gonna call this the demo project and I'll turn it into a new page. Now I usually start with a template, but because you can't read my templates, I'm gonna start with doing it by hand. So I'll start with something like type project and I'll give it a state and I usually use the to do do and done sets so that I know at what state is this project at and by using the same methods as the to do sets like to do doing done I don't have to think about like what project states are there's only three states it's either it's to do so I, I'm planning to start with the project doing these are my active projects and done and these are my archive project and that will come in later when I'm writing queries to get all my projects out so let's add something towards that project I make a task and I pick demo project and wrap it up. Now, if I go back to the project, you will see in linked references, it has this make a plan set. Now it's obvious because this is only one thing and you might want to use this with like a lot of notes and then it becomes useful to at least know what outstanding work do you have. So if you want to have a list of all the open tasks, what I do is I can make a simple query. So I make a live query, click on that one, say page reference and then say demo project. So basically anything that points towards this. And then I'm gonna to go to task and I'm gonna pick anything that is not done. So saying doing, I'm saying in progress to do, wait, all those things together. And then the end result is that this will show me all my open tasks. Now I also have a couple of advanced queries I use for this and I will post those in the description down below so you can copy paste them into your project. But this gives like a nice overview. It's a simple system and it will show you all your open tasks. It works wonderfully well if you have a project where the order of tasks doesn't matter. It's just like a lot of small steps that need to get done. Or it's more of like an ongoing thing where tasks pop up as you're doing them. And of course, the moment you finish it here, it gets finished everywhere. So it's finished in the link reference and here because it's the same thing. It just points towards one set. Now, it also works absolutely well when you want to do something like meeting notes. So you're saying like, hey, meeting start project. I'm linking that one to the demo project. Uh, I usually mark it as a meeting and then I can say something like attending at myself and Bob the cat and then you make notes and then because the linking happens again if you go to the demo project and you look at link references you'll see your meeting notes is here and if you just want to see things like meeting notes you can filter by going here and saying like hey I just want everything that's related to meetings and then once you close that it filters out just the meetings this also works if you want to go and say like hey I only want to get things that are tasks that are done so if you click on done you'll get like a list of all the things that are already done this should be enough to have like a basic project set up and then the rest of the page 
is in my case usually just related things i can put notes in there i can link towards things one of the other things that i do if it becomes like a more complex if i have like a lot of notes is that i start using block embeds i talk about this in depth in my getting results video that will be at the end of the video and link in the description so that's simple project management one of the benefits it's fast and it's easy to do content switching one of the disadvantage things the order of tasks you can't really decide on that you can do a bit with priority but it's a hassle and you're starting to lose overview once it becomes more complex so you have to do some work to clean it up now let's dive into the second one which i call the planner and with the planner it's very simple towards the gatherer setup that i had but i'm making it a tad bit more complex by moving all the tasks into the project. So what does that mean? We have this same project here, but instead of collecting all the queries, I remove this and I just have like a task list in here and I'll add a couple of example tasks. One of the benefits that you have here is that all the tasks are like nicely ordered. You can go from top to bottom and you can make subtasks by using indentations and it really allows you to fine grain your project. But a disadvantage is, is that if you have tasks that are added towards the project that are not here, you either have to go towards this page, add them here, or you add them towards the journal, but then they're not part of this overall list. And this is where the extra work comes in. So if I'm making like a task, so I'm having a to-do here, so I then give demo to task, adding uh, to project, and I pick the demo project. Okay, so one of the problems you start hitting here is that the task that we just made isn't showing up in the task list. Now, one of the ways you can fix that is by going down to the linked references and filtering. And then I'll filter for to-do, so I'll do that again. So I click on to-do and I say just the to-do task. And then I'll see those things on the side. I'll close this and just shift click the day that the task has, so like this one and now it will open it on the site. And one of the reasons why I do that is because I'm like, hey, I want this line to be in two places. One, I want it in the task list, and two, I want a reference towards that. So what I do is I do copy, paste, and have it on the same level. It disappears, this is not a big problem, it's still there, it's just out of view because I filled it on the to-do. And I then move the to-do to where I need to do it. So let's give demo of task and say like, okay, that's part of start of project. Um, and let's move her up a line. Okay, so you're thinking like, okay, there's a lot of linking and what am I getting for this? What are you getting for the work? Now, what you're getting for the work is context. So you see the task here that I just moved here and then I made the control C, control V from its origin source. And what that gets me is this block reference link on the end, the one. And if I click on that, then if I have to work on this to-do later, it shows me when it was discussed. So it was created during this meeting and there's details. And if I click on it, I get even more details. So I can see the context for this task or maybe any related information that I need. And that saves me time. So I lose a little bit of time making the whole sim link moving tasks around. But what I gain is that I can plan it. I can put it like in the overall view here that you can see and decide where the order is. And I can see for each task what work was done. Now say, for example, I want to do more work on this. I want to figure this stuff out. Then what I do is the same. I do a control C here. I get the line and I just go to my journal and go towards a new one. Let's uh, let's pick a different day. Let's say that I was working on it in the future. So I'm in the 26th and I'm saying Ctrl T, Ctrl V. Ctrl T is a plugin uh, that allows me to add the time. And I said like, okay, doing work, giving a time travel demo. So I made this time travel demo. And now if I go back to our demo project, as you can see, there's a two. And if I click on it, it shows me both the 21st when it was created and it shows me the details on when it was there. So yes, it's a bit more work, but you get a lot more planning and overview for it back and this helps tremendously with like longer projects where you need to know the status now when i'm using the planning setup i like to see how far along i am because i start making a lot of tasks and subtasks and for that one i use a plugin called to do master and what it does it allows you to have a progress bar so if i look at this like the task list i can go here i do slash to do and then you see an option here to do master and if i click away from it it starts rendering this progress bar now if i look at it it says layer five because that's the amount of tasks that see and if you finish something then it starts cleaning up the set it also works for subtasks so there you can see the progress happening if i have really large projects i use this and then i have like to do's in here with subtasks and every to do with subtasks is like a block of work to get things done and they all get their own progress bar so this is like really nice if you have a large project and you want to keep 
track of how you're finishing it up. Logstick is nice, but it isn't very good at working with others. Yes, you could use something like GitHub to share your notes, but it's never going to be as easy or fluent as a cloud service with a central system like Notion or Todoist. So very often I have projects where the actual work, the tasks are not part of my project, but are usually external in either a Todoist project or a Notion project. And then with the Notion project, it usually becomes a bit more complex because I also have to start copying over notes. Hate it, but if you have to work with others, then log seek at this point in time just isn't as useful unless you're working with all nerds where everybody is like diehard a git user and can swap around markdown files like it's nobody's business this will probably change in the future but we're not there yet so when i'm using like an outsourcing method what i do is i still link all my nodes and tasks anything that happens towards that project page and it's very much like the simple gatherer method that I had in the beginning with the only difference being that I still move those tasks out of my system but I move them instead of to the project page towards a logseq page pro tip make sure that the name of your project page and the name of your todoist project or your notion project is exactly the same copy paste it don't make any creative changes to it make it exactly the same this helps tremendously with your mental cognitive to switch between the sets it's the i think the only function from power that i actually like i tried using the four folder structure i absolutely hate it that's me um it might work for you, but I definitely recommend using the same name. Saves you a ton of time. So I move these things from the page towards Todoist. So I have Todoist on the right and Logseq on the left. And then what I do, um, I use like the apps function, but normally the URL bars, but I just copy the URL and paste it into Logseq. And that means that anytime I'm coming towards this project page, you know, oh, I'm using Todoist to manage this one because I have external dependencies or people that I work with. And then I can click on that and it will open a browser. It go from Logseq to Todoist and it will show me my demo project, making it super easy to quickly get towards that page. Uh, another thing that I do is like having them open side by side and then like moving tasks over. Now, there's a couple of ways you can do this. But uh, one of the things that I like is like I do something like make steps. Like, okay, that's a part of it. And then I can also go here, right click and say like copy the block URL and then add that somewhere. So you have your projects, you know where to find your tasks and collect your nodes and everything. And then you need an overview of those active projects. And the simplest way to do that is to make like a page projects in my case and make a simple query there and say like page property and then say type is project and that will give you all the projects and then you can filter it down by saying state is doing or state is to do now doing will of course tell you this is what i'm working on right now and the to do or later means that that project is scheduled for later you shouldn't be having 20 projects on to do that's just too much you won't be able to focus and get stuff done I usually try to aim around having around three to five projects open at the same time, maybe more if the context is totally different, but that allows you to stay focused. And then your to do should probably only have like 10 or 15. If it's more than that, then, you know, you should be really recategorizing and figure out what to do with them. And that way you have like this small set you can quickly skim when you have bandwidth and pick the next project you want to work on without cluttering up all the faults and things that you have. So those are the three methods that I know of. Which method works best for you? Are you more of a gatherer, like keep it simple, a planner, really get like everything down there, nitty gritty and know the whole task structure? Or are you forced to use like the outsource method because you're stuck on Jira or Notion because you have to work with a team and they can't look into your Logseek brain? Let me know in the comments down below. I love to hear it from you. Now, personally, I use the planner function a lot. I love making templates with like detailed steps. I use them mostly for videos where I just use the template and then go step by step. And I don't have to look at anything else. I just open Logseek and I do all the work in one place and then i also use todoist a lot because the things like quick ad mobile apps that are reliable and fast are just essential for me to, to clear my head i would love to do it in logseq but i can't wait 10 seconds until logseq is done loading to write stuff down i do hope they get that fixed and that at some point i will have a quick add to logseq button that allows me to get things straight out of my head into logseq in like less than a second flat so here on the side is my patreon wall these are the people that are helping me to keep going to sponsor me thank you all 
if you want to be on the wall and join the patreon community that i have set up there i have like the full whimsical on my project set and i just talk through the elements that are in it anything that gets put on there i'll take serious so like if you have like a request or a video or some topic you would like me to go in depth about as a patreon member i'll make time to at least shoot a quick video with my thoughts if you have any questions so hope to see you there link will be in the description down below until the next one remember you're awesome keep it up